Good afternoon and welcome to the Trig Minerals Investor Webinar. All attendees are in a listen-only mode. If you'd like to ask a question to the company, please enter it into the Q&A panel within Zoom. I'll now hand over to Trig Chief Geologist, Jonathan King. Thank you, Jonathan. Good, thank you, Nathan. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome here. Uh, today is just, a, I think, a very quick overview, primarily of the geology of our portfolio. Uh, and the opportunities that uh, that presents. Uh, a little less on the corporate uh, information because if you want that information, I would advise you to look at the website. So the discussion is around the growing importance of antimony and really how TRIG has repositioned itself uh, to take full advantage of that. A quick disclaimer, I'll read that later. Um, Okay, the focus really is going to be on discussion of the Achilles Antimony Project, which hosts the Wild Cattle Creek deposit, and really what we're doing moving forward with that particular asset. I think you'll see by the end of the presentation that we have a great uh, amount of project flow uh, with the advanced projects, as well as um, some wonderful grassroots exploration opportunities. That is the team right there that is bringing this together. So hopefully we will continue to do so and uh, be of uh, great benefit to you as shareholders. Quick look at the capital structure of the company. Uh, we actually have a bit more cash in, at bank at the moment. We're up towards uh, almost $4 million. Um, and you can see the share price performance in the lower left-hand side, uh, obviously, uh, we're hopeful that with the increasing antimony price, which is currently around $38,000, that uh, we will continue to benefit from that uplift, and particularly as we bring our assets online. Don't really need to focus too much on antimony as an, a, an explanation slide. I mean, really, if you want to chase that information, that is available again online. But the fundamental character is that uh, the Chinese deposits uh, are reducing now, the grade is lowering, and the Chinese are getting a little bit more concerned about the need to preserve uh, their antimony for their own weapons development. And what that has done is that they essentially put the shutters down and uh, on the market, the export market, and that has seen uh, the pricing mechanism for antimony respond and it's responded very, very well. It's up about three times at the moment from where it was uh, 12 months ago, 140 odd percent. And um, in fact, I think it's more. And of course it has meant that uh, there is a great big gap in the uh, market right now and there is no one to fill it. And so uh, Western nations and Western companies are scrambling to fill that slot and, uh, and we are one of them. That's just some comments. There we are, comment I just made about China. Russia was the other big supplier, but of course Russia at the moment um, is under sanctions, so they are not exporting anything. And so we've got this big gap and people are moving to fill it. Right, this is really where I want to start talking because this is the stuff that is of greater interest to me. Um, you can see on this slide, our portfolio, uh, we have over 600 square kilometres, which is concentrated in the New England origin in uh, New South Wales. Um, our portfolio includes, if we look in the top right and swinging clockwise, uh, Achilles, uh, which is our flagship project and includes the Wild Cattle Creek uh, deposit, which is about 15,600 tonnes of antimony. We move to uh, the south of that, and we have our Taylor's Arm project, which is really split into an upper Taylor's and a lower Taylor's. Uh, this is a wonderful um, historical antimony camp. There's a lot of opportunity in there uh, and a lot of work needs to be done. Very early stages for us, uh, but we do have one granted tenement and a number of applications in that area. And then we swing across to the west, right next to Hillgrove, and you can see our Spartan project. 
And the interesting thing about our Spartan project is that, of course, it lies on the same rocks and the same structure, at least in part, that uh, Hillgrove sits in. So uh, we're hopeful that there may be some uh, potential for a Hillgrove analogue. Coming into the Achilles project, uh, we are loca located about 40 kilometres west of Coffs Harbour. This is Australia's highest grade undeveloped antimony resource. And our work already is beginning to show that there is a lot of scope for lifting that value or lifting the size of this deposit. Currently it sits at uh, 610,000 uh, uh, kilotons um, at 2.56% antimony for about 15,600 uh, tons of contained metal. So that's sitting in you know, the upper categories of indicated and inferred. So it's a good positive start. And the, the asset itself was only acquired for $450,000. Uh, and that was, I should say, in equity. So for us, a fantastic pickup. Uh, we have six confirmed regional targets. Um, only one of them has been drilled at uh, Jezebel which produced 1.3 metres at 11.86% uh, antimony. And from our recent work, uh, we've broadened that scope across the project uh, by doing some mercury vapour work. And what we've seen is that there are about 30 advanced targets uh, across the portfolio or across the tenement area. So a lot of scope for expansion. Coming into the resource itself, um, the mineralization at Wild Cattle Creek. So this is the deposit. It's a silicified um, sulfidic breccia core. And you can see, if we look at the diagram here, you can see the red blobs, the orange blobs, that's really mapping out the breccia core, the high grade core. And you can see that the system is uh, plunging to the west and you can see that it's plunging at a relatively shallow angle. Now, the mineralization itself um, has been drilled to a vertical depth of only 200 meters, and it is stepping out 350 meters down plunge. So from a vertical depth perspective, it's still very shallow, and obviously we need to do more work there to step out the mineralization down plunge. The deposit, uh, is enriched in antimony, tungsten, gold, arsenic, mercury, selenium, and sulfur. And as we've uh, come in to remodel this resource, which is the work we're currently undertaking, we're establishing that there is quite clearly a gold system that's sitting underneath this uh, antimony resource. So there's not many holes into it, but there is quite clearly a lift in the gold grades as we increase with depth. So we think that that's an exciting opportunity and one we're keen to uh, develop. This is a quick look at some of the modeling work that we've been doing. And um, what you can see in this diagram is that uh, we have the high grade core, which is in red, and that comprises two materials. Really, it's a cemented uh, breccia. Uh, sorry, the red and the blue, really, it's the, uh, cemented breccia, which is the high grade core, and the blue, which is the called the incohesive breccia, which just means it's a, it's a friable breccia, uh, breaking down a bit. And um, generally the grades in that are exceeding uh, 2%. And uh, you can see a number of drill holes on this section, and you can see the high grade intercepts. You can see that there is some gold associated with the system. Um, but I guess more importantly to me, is the green zone that wraps the, uh, or encases the high grade core. Now that comprises two components. There is a tungsten uh, antimony um, uh, stock vein system, which immediately wraps the high grade core. And then there's an outer disseminated antimony rosette uh, um, uh, you know, alteration. Uh, 
sorry. <laughs> and really the key thing to me is that um, we know that within that green zone, the grades are north of 0.1% and um, probably sitting more or averaging about 0.3%. And I, I guess the key point there is that when this resource was originally developed back in 2010, the company applied a 1% cutoff. Now, 1% in the current market is more than likely very economic. And the, the cutoff for mineralization or a likely economic operation may be down at about 0.3. So our work, we're trying to establish that through our work, our ongoing efforts here to remodel this resource. And much of that green component will now likely be captured within the resource model. So as you can imagine, there is substantial growth um, in the resource potential or the, uh, the, uh, the resource scale, I guess, um, if we're able to uh, capture and show that the, that green material is in fact viable. So that's really what we're looking to do around the resource. I should add that um, the big thing here, we go from a mining width um, really, which is focused on the red and the blue. So in the current, the current model, that's about an average width of about five metres, slightly under. Um, if we start to include the green material and we can include as much of that green as possible, our mining width could expand to an average width beyond 12 metres, maybe 15 metres. And at that point, suddenly... Uh, we go through an economic shift in terms of our uh, the way we would extract this ore. So um, we could move to bulk mining um, approaches, and that to us means that we would achieve probably greater economic uh, economics of scale, and uh, that would of course benefit the company greatly. Another thing to consider in the model is that. Um, I've already mentioned that there's gold and tungsten in the system, but both those metals have been overlooked from the point of view of the resource estimate from 2010. Now, we see the merit in including those and um, we are moving to include those. So uh, both of those will impact uh, the economics uh, of this deposit. The other thing that we like about this structure is that one thing that Anchor did prior to uh, uh, them essentially pulling up the shutters on the project is that they um, they started to realise that there was the likelihood of repetition uh, in this sequence. So that often when you see uh, loads, we you know you hear geologists talk about stacked loads. Well we see that potential here, that there could be uh, stacked loads and there are other uh, possibilities along the strike of the Beals Down Fault. Beals Down Fault hosts this deposit. The tenement covers about a six kilometre length of the Beals Down Fault. We know that this fault is loaded full of antimony and there is the possibility that there will be several repetitions of something similar to Wild Cattle Creek along the length of the Beals Down Fault. And we just need to pin down those positions. So if we move to that regional picture, um, as I said, we already know that there's a number of positions. I apologize for this diagram, uh, but you have Fletcher's here, Graham and Navins. We have Wild Cattle Creek, we have Jezebel, she Oak Trench and Wild Cattle Creek East. All of these contain numbers. And there are a number of other positions within the Wild, uh, within the Beals Down Fault itself, which also carry grades through this area through here. Now, not a lot of regional exploration was undertaken by Anchor. They really did focus on Wild Cattle Creek. And so really to us, um, it's almost a blank canvas outside of Wild Cattle Creek. So, um, you know, uh, we just want to get in there and see what we've got. Um, the structures that you see interpreted here, which are these red dashes, are, are real structures. And the underlying base image is the mercury vapour uh, work that we did. Now, uh, mercury is in the Wild Cattle Creek deposit. It is um, 
in the form of native metal and cinnabar. And as people know, mercury uh, often exists as a vapour at room temperature. So what we see is mercury within the deposit being released as a vapour. That vapour is detectable and we can use that to map out potential positions. And this is Wild Cattle Creek. You can see that there's an enhanced signature around that. This is Jezebel. There's an enhanced signature around that. If you look across these deposits, everywhere we've got essentially a deposit, we are seeing a vapour signature. So that gives us a lot of confidence. The other thing that gives us confidence is that we can see the, the strike of the Beals Down Fault. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if we start to progress our eyes across the screen, you can start to see a very uh, similar trend and orientation to many of these vapour anomalies. So we see these very broad um, west of northwest striking trends, and they've got high vapour uh, responses. The red obviously is hot, blue is cold. So if it's hot, then we're equating that with high mercury. And if we're equating that with high mercury, then really what we're saying is that these would re represent a potential analogue to a wild cattle creek. So we've got a big structure running through there potentially and another big structure cutting through here and perhaps even a third one up here. So uh, there are other similarities down here in the south, um, but really to me, the great effort seems to be coming up into this area up in the north. So uh, there seems to be plenty of um, opportunity for expansion of the project and expansion of the resource base well beyond Wild Cattle Creek. Uh, just a quick look here um, in the table, you can see some of the rock chips results. Now we've got many, many more rock chips results, which are all reporting at these sorts of levels of antimony. And uh, again, you know, what is absent? Drilling. We've just got to get in there and drill. Switching from Achilles to really the, the next major project, which is Taylor's Arm. Uh, it's split into two parts, Taylor's Arm North, Taylor's Arm South. Um, really, uh, the, the amazing thing about this diagram, and I might actually jump ahead and then come back to this one, um, I'm just trying to paint a picture here for people to, to consider, okay? This on picture on our left is how um, Hillgrove looked uh, back at basically the, the start of the century, um, previous century, and through that century, there was a number of uh, independent operations, which as companies came in and they unified the block and they started doing the work, what we saw is that these uh, different camps consolidated into about six distinct mining centres, which are the Hillgrove mining operation uh, today. Uh, this is our ground here on the left, just so you can see how close we are. Um, and then here we are on the right, and we're looking at Taylor's arm. And what you can see is that uh, there is a difference in scale. This is two kilometres, this is five kilometres. But again, you're working very different country. It's a lot more rugged. Uh, so access was a lot more difficult, but even with that, there are a lot of workings that have been identified through this area. And now it nearly every single one of these workings is at least at 25% antimony. Many of them exceed 50% antimony. So um, what will happen as we start to do our work and we will be looking to do essentially the same steps as what's happened here, We'll start to build out, we'll, uh, we'll start locally, we'll start to step out, expand out, and obviously these things will start to fall into mining centres. And hopefully, of course, they'll continue to develop and ultimately we might see something like a hill grove developing out of this area or this area down here to the south. So just stepping back now. Um, so we've got one application, uh, sorry, one granted title, which is really this block and this block, main block up through here. And then we've got a number of applications which are all sitting around it. Um, there's 88 historical workings, which are in seven mining camps at this point. Six of those are for antimony. Um, they all contain the same sulfidic 
uh, quartz breccia material. And as I said, many of them are probably at 50%. It includes the testers mine, uh, which has Australia's highest known antimony grade of 63%. And the other thing that has come out of our re more recent work is that we've noted that there is an increasing gold trend as you move up to the Northwest. So as we move up the project group, we find that we move from sort of six grams per tonne in this area up to 24 grams per tonne or in excess of 24 grams per tonne up in this area up here. So uh, gold has not received a lot of consideration at all. Um, however, we are primarily there for uh, the antimony. We think that you know, uh, as the work proceeds, we will probably find that as with Wild Cattle Creek, as with um, Hillgrove, you'll end up with a upper zone, which is antimony rich and a lower zone, which is gold rich. So we do expect to see that pattern continue here. Um, the other thing that has come out from our recent acquisition is over here on the eastern side of the northern block. And we have this thing called the Twinga Silver Mine, which is an out, seems to be an outstanding silver play. Um, we know that there is a structure there which is over uh, 1,200 metres long. Uh, it's two metres wide at one end and it's over five metres wide at the other end. And some of the grades in this thing have just been phenomenal. Uh, there was a, I think a 24 uh, tonne uh, bulk sample that was ripped out of this thing. And it went, I think it was from memory, about 127 ounces to the tonne. So it was over 4,000 grams were removed in the uh, almost 5,000 grams um, of silver were removed. And um, I just it, it's just stunning that this thing is sitting there with no work done on it. Now, um, obviously, we need to establish, well, firstly, tenement needs to be granted, and then we need to uh, determine access conditions. But there is a, a fabulous silver target sitting right there. And it's not alone. There are several others there. And um, there are also some Alta Antimony plays in O'Donnell's Reef, Racecourse Reef. Uh, these are probably, I say, lower grade opportunities uh, only because they're around 5% compared to the 50% plus that we get over in the, the west of the same ground. Uh, in the south, you have um, the Munger Creek Historical Mine, which last operated in 1974 with over 1,000 tonnes extracted here. Uh, Neil and Taylor's saw mining in the 1970s and so did uh, little per the Purgatory Mine group in here. They, that also saw production in the 1970s. So, yeah, there is a history of antimony mining here. Um, what hasn't happened is that no one has stepped out and done the big picture work. So that is what we're going to do. And hopefully we can uh, extend uh, a number of these opportunities to mining. The Spartan project, uh, which sits over um, near Hillgrove. Uh, really the key thing about this one is that um, here is Hillgrove and you can see the rocks that are sitting under Hillgrove and you can see that in this south southern corner we've got the Hillgrove fault which is one of the key bounding faults. This is the other key bounding fault to the Hillgrove underneath. Um, you can see that we're lying over the same rocks and uh, this is the um, Hillgrove Plutonic Suite. So hopefully uh, we can uh, get in there and establish that there is further mineralization um, within this block. We know that the Hillgrove Fault is in itself mineralized. There's the rock barrel system, which lies just off screen. Um, so there is potential in and about this area. Uh, lastly, um, I'd like to just very quickly reflect on the Drummond Gold Portfolio. Uh, it's a very large portfolio. It's essentially targeting two systems, types of systems. We have an intrusive related gold system in the north and in the south. We're really chasing low um, sulfidation epithermals. Uh, there is substantial gold endowment in this area, pretty much about 50% of 
the gold in Queensland comes from within this block. So um, it's a very, very important district for Queensland and for the country. Um, what uh, the company has done is we were out there recently drilling some IP targets. And really the key thing about the work was that uh, we are looking for what we consider to be a, a Pajingo analog. Pajingo is about a 5 million ounce gold deposit. And it's got you know, very particular alteration. And we are seeing the same alteration uh, in the drill holes that we have put down at Southwest Limeys, which is really the principal target at this point in time in this area. This slide just shows some of this intense alteration and uh, the brecciation. And then we've tried to position where we think in we are in the system. So as I said, we developed three holes. Um, the deepest hole went to just beyond 400 metres. And at this stage, we feel that we are just sitting above the key target zone. So obviously another round of work there to be done, but there is still, there remains very significant upside potential in this project. And you know, we need to get back in there and do some more work. And I think that that'll do. I've talked enough, bored you all to tears and um, I'm ready to take some questions. Thanks, Jonathan. Just a reminder, if you would like to ask a question to the company, please enter it into the Q&A panel within Zoom. Uh, we've had a few questions come through, Jonathan. So the first one is, what is the company looking to achieve uh, from now until the first half of 2025 at the project? Yeah, great question. Um, thank you for that one. And it's probably something that should be in the presentation. <laughs> um, Really, we're doing a couple of things at Achilles right now. Uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, moving to restate the results. And as I highlighted in that presentation, we're looking to do it uh, considering the cutoff, considering the inclusion of gold and silver, and including the uh, the width, uh, the increased width of the ore body. So we hope to uh, get that out. Then after that, we will be moving to um, look at the scoping study that uh, Anchor completed and we will throw the new numbers into the, into the um, scoping study and we will see what comes out of that. And obviously we are advancing towards uh, implementing our maiden drill campaigns on uh, the Wild Cattle Creek resource. So we will be looking to essentially step out drilling, drilling uh, the antimony body down plunge and looking at that gold system underneath uh, with the view to growing the resource further. And then we will start to look at um, the regional prospects and uh, what we can do there with those. So um, that's really the plan for the first six months of next year. Uh, we are running a targeting study. So that's at Achilles. Um, we are running a targeting study at Taylor's Arm. Uh, and of course, we will be looking to get on the ground with some preliminary prospecting, soil geochemistry, uh, standard exploration approaches um, before we then decide, okay, what are the next steps here? Um, and then as for the rest of the portfolio, well, they really are applications and they need to be granted before we'll consider what we're doing there. So that's the 12 months. Thank you. Your next question. Um, person wants to know what are relations with the, with the locals around the project like? Are they receptive to mining? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I, I guess the key thing is that from our point of view, uh, we're very open. We're very committed environmentally. We're very committed to working with uh, the local community. And um, you know, we want to be as transparent and uh, as upfront as we can be with them. Uh, we are yet to start that process. Um, I guess we have reached out, of course, to the principal landowner uh, who holds the ground over the top of the Wild Cattle Creek deposit. Um, we, you know, it's very early days there, but um, as for uh, the company, as I said, we understand we need to bring the entire community along with us. This is a very uh, beautiful and pristine part of the world. It's got to be looked after. And uh, we accept that, you know, we have a, that obligation to look after it and do the right things by all stakeholders. 
Thank you. Um, can you please provide an update on the silver pot potential in your po in the po portfolio? Yeah, um, that the Tuinga mine, which uh, sits out to the east uh, of the Taylor's Arm, um, yeah, it's sitting in an application, so the tenement has to be granted before we can do anything. Um, the fact that it's uh, it's been sitting there for all this time, known but with no work, suggests there's uh, perhaps some issues that need to be, um, I guess, some bridges that or hurdles that need to be um, crossed. Um, we will wait for grant of the, the title and then we will commence our process. And hopefully by that time, you know, the communities, the stakeholders have learned that we uh, do what we say and that uh, we are respectful, we are honest, and that we will look after the environment and that will open doors for us. So I hope that our, uh, you know, our reputation will precede us and that will open the doors to such opportunities like uh, the Twinga Silver Deposit. Thank you. And just back to Wild Cattle Creek, is there, do you see yourself, does the company see itself working with Lovato Resources uh, by leveraging their um, established processing plants? Well, that's a good one. Um, I guess the obvious answer is yes. Um, but I can say that our board is, is working extremely hard uh, behind the scenes on a number of, of opportunities. Um, but in terms of the economics and um, Lovato, Lovato uh, look, I think we need to see where this resource ends up at this point, uh, not only just due to the restatement, but uh, what else can come out of that Achilles tenement? To me, I think it's an amazing opportunity. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know the, the resource has already, I think, potential to um, potentially double or more in number. And then when we look at that step out picture, it's, it's a blank template. It could deliver anything. So we could go from a situation where, yes, we toll, or we could be an independent uh, operator. And um, I, I can't answer the question as to where we may be, but I think it's important for all players in the antimony space to uh, uh, work as a unit for the betterment of the industry. So hopefully there will still be some relationship with Lovato and um, you know, our board is very proactive behind the scenes, uh, building bridges to everybody and <laughs> anyone connected with this space. Thank you, Jonathan. There are no further questions at this time. So I'll now hand back to you for closing remarks. Okay, um, I guess, I'm sorry if that was a bit disjointed, everyone. <laughs> um, but look, I, I think to me, this is an amazing opportunity. I'm very excited to be involved with it. I, I love Wild Cattle Creek. I think the potential in Wild Cattle Creek is at this point absolutely huge. I think the Achilles Tenement, uh, the potential is way beyond imagination. Um, I hope I'm not over speaking it, but I am very excited by that opportunity. Um, what can be in Taylor's arm? Uh, again, who knows? Who knows? It's such early days. So, look, I think it's a very exciting portfolio and it's a very exciting company to be uh, involved with at this time. And I'm looking forward to just, you know, answering my own questions. And uh, hopefully in answering those, I'll answer yours. And that will uh, see this company develop uh, and maintain this current trajectory. I think that'll do. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Nathan.